Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about the brand new TS-8886 It's their new ZFS file system Xeon powered NAS from QNAP Today we're going to do a software overview for you guys about wondering whether this is going to be suitable for your business um, We've done lots of overviews in the past of QTS but I thought we'd do a dedicated one today just on QUTS. And although I've got a whole dedicated video just on the storage and snapshots area on its own, I did think it was worth touching on some of the other applications that are available, as well as the system infrastructure as a whole. So right now I'm accessing this NAS via the web browser here. This web browser interface via Chrome is what you're gonna see if you access this device using a PC or Mac system. Although there are multiple Windows applications as well um, that allow you to connect with the device in a more file managed way. Lots of client apps that can be installed on your host system to have localized files on your own NAS um, be visible on your local PC or Mac system. Now, uh, to have a look at the options, there's a lot of similarity here between QTS and QUTS, uh, QTS being the EXT file system version. And if you look at this device, you can see lots of the same option. There's lots of control, lots of configuration, everything from adding brand new users, um, either individually or en masse. You can create bulks of users, import users, and they can have their own security credentials. And again, we've got dedicated video, dedicated videos on most of these things. And again, you've got the network file control, which you would expect. And of course, that great application in network and virtual switch. Uh, this is the QNAP tool that allows you to create not only dedicated and intelligent networks for all your connected users, but on top of that, it allows you to create sub-networks, virtual networks, and virtual switches that can be utilized with VMs and physical machines combined. It allows you to create a completely um, nuanced virtual machine and physical machine network for all of your connected users. And again, that can be home or business use, but obviously when you're using a NAS like this, you are very much in business territory. And the whole thing, as devices are connected, they can appear in a topogra topographical map here. And then, of course, it will then show you how that works out across the virtual switches as well. And again, I do strongly recommend you look into a lot of the virtual switch options of this device. And again, coming out of that, there's lo lots more things to do with setting the system up right. Security, such as two-step verification. If you want to enable two-step verification for your users to use like an authenticator application to access the NAS. And again, the, the strength of those sort of things can be tailored quite easily. And again, there's a whole uh, myriad of security options, both available here and via the security counselor um, tool that arrives with your QNAP as well as malware um, remover and lots of um, antivirus options in the app center that we're going to look at in just a moment. Now scrolling along you've got lots of information here and again even if you take advantage of the two PCIe Gen 3 times 8 slots found on this device they will appear as expansion cards here and you can install graphics cards uh, network interface card upgrades such as 10 GBE and 20 GBE or um, wireless access cards and RAID cards and cache cards and more and they'll all be installed here and you can configure them you can even dedicate a number of these applications directly to a VM and remember this is a machine here because it's tiered storage system that we're going to talk about in a moment is highly motivated towards virtual machine environments while we're doing the rest of this let's go ahead and install the virtual machine tool for this NAS at the moment, I'm using a local area connection here, direct, uh, directly connected to the NAS, cable to cable, but there are other options readily available, and you obviously can use a switch, or have four dedicated users, some with different levels of access, 1 GBE, 2.5 GBE, 10 GBE if you install the cards. But it's worth highlighting that this device has 2.5 GBE by default on all of its four available network ports. Installing applications such as the virtual machine tool that I'm going to install now is incredibly straightforward. You can select where you want that storage to be installed. So in this case, we're just going to put it on the main hard drive tier, not the SSD 2.5 inch tier. And I'm going to go ahead and install the Virtualization Station app. And again, there are loads of applications and we'll go through those in just a moment. But the storage and snapshots area. 
allows you to overview pretty much all your storage. This is a three tier storage system. There's an area of hard drive storage in six hard drive bays. There are two 2.5 inch SATA bays and two NVMe SSD bays at PCIe Gen 3 times four each. Each of those tiers can be set uh, for raw storage if you choose, but of course the SSD tiers also allow you to take advantage of caching. You can use an area of SSD cache that will be used to assist the slower hard drive arrays, uh, arrays and therefore improve your internal performance while handling smaller files. The cache will learn the files that are the most important. It will learn um, the most overused files and thanks to the ZFS file system this works hand in hand with deduplication and compression. This is the means for the system to on the fly compress and decompress files to save space on your system and with deduplication you can enable um, duplicate files that are backed up from multiple sources to only be backed up once. So if you've got multiple Windows systems all of which are backing up to the NAS, a lot of those files are going to be the same. Deduplication allows the systems with their own QNAT dedupe de 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 tool on each of them to compress and um, uncompress each of those files as well as deduplicating to save even more space. It even keeps a record of the space that is saved over time from these tools. So if you go into them here, you can find out how much data has actually been saved over time due to compression and deduplication on each of those tiers. And as you can see, space has been saved. So moving forward from this, there are other options, of course, with regard to the storage and snapshot area, such as the ability to monitor and test individual drives, test their health and performance, and schedule performance checks periodically. And again, if you are using Seagate drives, such as the NVMEs that we're using here, you also have the option of Seagate's Einwolf Health Management System built into a number of those drives. But you've also got Smart and other features built in as well. And you can run those tests ad hoc or on a scheduled time of the day or week. Coming out of it there, you've also got the options of things like hybrid mount that allows you to effectively bolt on an area of cloud storage. And when you attach that cloud storage, it can be treated and visible as if it's local, which is one of the tremendous differences between synchronizing with a cloud and mounting an area of cloud storage. And this can be done in both directions, thanks to virtual JBOD that will also allow you to use an area of available space on your NAS and turn it into a pool of storage that you can make available to cloud platforms. As you can see, Virtualization Station is downloaded, and what I'm going to do now is just quickly run that tool so it can set up our virtual network switch for us. If we open it up here, it will ask us to double check that we've got all the settings in place, but of course we haven't set up our virtual switch. So if we click finish, it will go ahead and start creating it. Now, there are lots of applications ready to install on day one of this device. There's applications that can be used for third-party um, cloud platforms such as Office 365 and G Suite, where you might have email accounts and document editing tools, all of which with those accounts and credentials and more can be backed up with BoxSafe and viewed intuitively. So everything broken down and visible. So you end up with a cloud platform that can then synchronize with a local NAS platform. And therefore, if all of your staff, all of your guests, all of your clients are using your um, local area network with the NAS and a, a connection is dropped uh, between you and the cloud platform, such as an internet failure, then the data up until that point will be synchronized on BoxSafe. So you can continue uninterrupted and when the internet connection is reinstated, BoxSafe will um, re uh, reconnect the two platforms and make all those backups synchronized together. Now, again, scrolling along, many of these tools we've already talked about on the channel. We've talked about ones for multimedia, which you're probably not going to use on an NAS like this. Uh, this is definitely a business-focused device, although there are lots of tools such as OpenVINO, uh, several virtual machine tools, um, and dedicated file management tools that go way beyond that of the file management application file station. QSearch and QFiling give you an intelligent and business-aimed means to browse the data on your NAS in the easiest fashion. And with both of those tools, 
um, in conjunction with hybrid mount means that you have a multifaceted means to go through all of your data where you need it and quickly. Talking of searching for, for data, there's QMaggie. QMaggie is an AI-powered photo recognition tool that allows you to browse through thousands and thousands of photos where the system has already identified people, places, and things. It uses AI recognition to scan the files one by one by indexing them and uh, using Multimedia Console to find all of the pictures of the people and all the pictures of the things and then you can search intelligently for things for food for trees for landscapes for items and it will find them rather than just relying on file names if we move further along there's a video station plex media server and other media tools readily available from third-party partners as well carrying on from vms we have linux station which allows you to set up an ubuntu um, 18 Linux uh, VM and you can set that up in less than five clicks and have it deployed for ready use and access almost immediately. Finally, we have got QVR Pro. QVR Pro is the surveillance tool from QNAP. It gives you the ability to create an enterprise class surveillance system. For example, you can take advantage of access cameras, real link cameras and more and it will allow you to um, create uh, recording routines, profiles, um, uh, customizable alerts, and a customized camera feed visible via the network and the internet, as well as standalone applications with a keyboard video mouse. Although this NAS doesn't have an HDMI port, it does allow you to install a graphics card in order for you to take advantage of it. Now, after this, you've got other tools that can be used by third-party support, and a lot of them are going to be very much tailored to individual businesses and how you take advantage of them does come down to your own business needs. If you feel the system needs a bit of extra hardware, take advantage of the Mustang card manager, allowing you to install one of the QNAP Mustang cards that allows you to bolster the performance of your system with a simple installation of a PCIe card. Now, moving forward from this, we can go back into the virtualization station tool and from here, we can look at how one would go about installing a VM. As you can see on the screen, there is the VM Marketplace. And that's one of the things that's quite cool about their virtual machine tool, that it allows you to not only upload and create your own VMs with images and ISOs that you may already own, but you can also go ahead and download a free Windows VM in a few clicks. And it will download this VM for you to try, I believe it's a 60 day trial. And from there, you can then experiment with a VM and go from there. If you're looking for something a little bit more bespoke and a little bit more enterprise, you can look at the VM Marketplace, where they're adding slowly lots of different virtual machine platforms, which are far more tailored towards specific use. AWS volume gateways, PFSense for that great um, intrusion protection system, Zabbix, and of course QUTS Cloud allows you to create a virtual copy of QTS as a VM. If you browse files and folders on this device with FileStation, it's worth highlighting that documents can quite easily be opened in the device as it has a Microsoft Word plugin. So Microsoft Office, in fact, if you open an Excel document, a Word doc, or anything like that within your QNAP NAS, it will open using those tools. You will have to verify that you have a Windows account, but even a free Windows Outlook account can be used to verify this, and you only have to do it once. There's lots of ways in which you can take advantage of your storage on the TSH886 and QUTS Hero, although it has startling similarities to that of traditional EXT4 QTS, everything seems that little bit faster. And I do recommend you check out my video on the storage and snapshots where we talk about resilvering, we talk about compression and deduplication and recovering from a drive failure. But otherwise, this has been the software overview of QUTS on the H. 886. What a hard word that is to say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see on this series of videos about QUTS. And otherwise, I will see you next time.